Okay, what we're going to look at in this section are different applications of using the derivative to kind of solve out some word problems. And it's actually really interesting how all this works. Um, and the type of problems that we work are called uh, optimization problems or modeling with optimization or max min, something along those lines. And basically what we're trying to do is take some function that represents data or scenario and determine what's the maximum amount of things that could happen or what's the minimum amount of space that's used or something along those lines. So a few things to keep in mind while we're working on this. Number one, when you're working these problems, try and understand exactly what the problem is asking. Sometimes that can be really difficult, so look at the whole problem first. Read through the problem. Is it a situation you may be familiar with or have some understanding to? And then you can dive in deeper and find the more specific items to help you set your problem up. Number two, develop a mathematical model. You may need parameter or you may need area or volume. Um, you could need who knows what, but probably some sort of literal equation that you've used in the past to find circumference of a circle or the volume of a cylinder or the area of a pyramid. You're probably going to need something along those lines, so you'll need a model to use. You will want to graph the model. <clears throat> Graphing always makes things a lot easier to deal with. It gives you a good uh, way to see exactly what's happening with your information. So a lot of times um, uh, some sort of graph is really beneficial as well. You want to find critical points and endpoints. So if you're looking at, say, the area of a box, the box can only be certain dimensions, and those would be your endpoints. You want to check those guys. You also want to be able to find where your derivative is equal to zero or does not exist. Those are critical points that can help you. And then you want to interpret what your solution is. You know, what have you discovered? What have you found? And a lot of times we're looking for a solution that makes sense. So if I'm looking for the area of a box, and I know that this box should have about 12 square inches, and I get something along the lines of six miles, uh, there's probably an error in there, okay? So use your brain a little bit here. If you get some really wacky answer, that's not what you're looking for, so go through and double check your math. So let's dive in with a kind of a simple problem here. Find two numbers whose sum is 20 and whose product is as large as possible. So if we're gonna find two numbers whose sum is 20 and whose product is as large as possible, it's, it's one of those situations where we're going to say, hey, x plus y is going to be equal to 20. The problem is we can't really take a derivative of two separate things. We, we want one uh, specific deal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'm going to let x be my first number choice. And remember, I can only go up to 20. So... If I pick x to be my first number, then 20 minus x would be my second number. So those are the two things that I'm dealing with. Now the whole problem, find two numbers whose sum is 20 and whose product is as large as possible. Well, if I add these two guys together, I'm going to get 20. So now I just need to check out the derivative of, of, or I need to check out the product of those. So I want f prime of x to be as large as, or f of x to be as large as possible. And I'm working with x times 20 minus x. So, uh, you know, it's going to be easier on this guy to refer to him as 20x minus x squared. Go ahead and find derivative. and set it equal to zero, okay? And, and when you do this, you can, fat, you can divide a two out of everything and that gives us, um, let's see, I'm running out of space here. That gives us 10 minus x equals zero. So x equals 10, that's one of my critical points. In fact, that's the only critical point that I'm gonna get. Let me just check real quick. I'm pretty sure 10's my only critical point from all of this, yep. So what does that mean? That means that if I take this number, x equals 10, and I check it with my other number, 20 minus x, that would be 20 minus 10. If I multiply these two guys together, I get 100. If I add them up, I get 20. And when I multiply them together, that is the largest possible product, okay? I've got other numbers that add up to 20, 
but when I multiply them together, they aren't 100, like, for example, 20, 18 uh, plus 2. 18 plus 2 is 20, but 18 times 2 is 36. Or 16 plus 4. 16 plus 4 is 20, but 16 times 4 is 64. Uh, 11 plus 9 is 20, but 11 times 9 is 99. So I've got all these different things to check. How do I, how do I know which one is largest? Well, set up a mathematical model, take a derivative and find critical points, and then solve it. And that's how it works. So this is a simpler problem right here. We'll check out some other ones on the following slides that are a little bit more exciting.